SDO Sergao, kalidad na edukasyon sa tanan panahon. Good morning, Deped Siargao. Marajaw na buntag isla ng Siargao. And good morning to our subscribers, viewers, likers, and listeners. Welcome to the last day of this webinar series on LR development process initiated by the Division LR team. In behalf of the LR team, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude for the full support that you have for us since day one of the said events and you are still with us today your participation cooperation commitment and willingness to learn inspires the team to perform the task well para sa bata para sa bayan education must continue amidst any circumstances the last four days of this activity has been successful by the grace of god and we are now in our last day we have two speakers this morning who will talk on quality assurance. To start off, let us give a tribute to our country and tribute to God. me face the rising sun comfort me through all the pain that life may bring there's no other hope that I can lean upon lead me Lord lead me all my life walk by me Walk by me across the lonely road that I may face Take my arms and let your hand show me the way Show the way to live inside your heart All my days, all my life you are my light You're the lamp upon my feet Hold it tight, my Lord, I need you there You are my life I cannot live alone Let me stay by your guiding light All through my life and lead me, Lord. And lead me, Lord. Even though at times I'd rather go along my way, help me take the right direction. Take your road. Lead me, Lord, and never leave my side. All my days, all my life You are my light You're the Lord upon my feet Hold it tight, my Lord, I need you there You are my light I cannot live alone let me stay by your guiding light All through my light You are my light You're the Lord upon my feet All the time, my Lord, I need you there You are my light I just cannot live alone But let me stay by your guiding light All through my life All through my days 
Lead me along. Lead, Lahat tayo'y mayroong pagkakaiba Sa tingin pa lang ay makikita na Iba't ibang kagustuhan Ngunit isang patutunguhan Gabay at pagmamahal ang hanap Magbibigay ng halaga sa iyo Nais mong ipakilala Kung sino ka man talaga Pinoy, ikaw ay Pinoy Ipakita sa mundo Kung ano ang kaya mo Ibang-ibang Pinoy Huwag kang matatako Pagmalaki mo, Pinoy ako, Pinoy tayo Pakita mo ang tunay at kung sino ka Merong mang maganda at masaya Wala namang perfecto Basta magpakatotoo Oh, oh, oh Gabay ang pagmamahal ang hanap mo Magbibigay ng halaga sa iyo Nais mong ipakilala Kung sino ka man talaga Pinoy, ikaw ay Pinoy Ipakita sa mundo Kung ano ang kaya mo Ibang-ibang Pinoy, huwag kang matatakot Ipagmalaki mo, Pinoy ako, Pinoy tayo Talagang ganyan ang buhay, dapat ka nang masanay wala rin mangyayari kung laging nakikibagay Ipakilala ang iyong sarili Ano man sa iyong mangyayari Ang lagi mong iisipin Ay kayang kayang gawin Pinoy, ikaw ay Pinoy Ipakita sa kung ano ang kaya mo Ibang-ibang Pinoy Huwag kang matatako Ipagmalaki mo Pinoy ako, Pinoy tayo
this time, ladies and gentlemen, let us listen to the message of the Chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division, Dr. Jemna G. Pobe. Hi, good morning everyone. I pray that everybody is in their best of health. It is a true pleasure to be with you in these activities. With a series of learnings you have gathered from the previous days, I firmly believed that you are now equipped with the knowledge and skills on learning resource development process. Thus, will definitely make our new normal be more interesting, stimulating, reinforcing, and more effective to provide our learners quality basic education. And through this webinar workshop, we can be assured that even in this time of the crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, we can still continue making productive ways, mode of delivering basic education to our learners that despite the changes, the end result or output would still be the same. With this, may I then reiterate to solicit from you to take advantage Take active participation in the conceptualization of every aspect of the activity. To all of us, good luck and anticipating success of our endeavor for a quality learning resource. Mabuhay ang siyagaw! Fellow workers in the field of education, we are happy to have with us this morning our very own education program supervisor, Ms. Lusandra R. Fernandez, our learning area supervisor in kindergarten, to discuss on content and layout quality assurance. Stay tuned, please. Good day everyone. Good day to our followers of the LRMDS Shergao Division YouTube channel. My greetings too to the quality assurance team in the schools and in the district and to the teacher writers. This is teacher Sandra, the Division Kindergarten Coordinator and MTBMLE Coordinator. In the previous episodes of this webinar series, Ms. Jarlene Rabaka discussed to you the basics and the salient feature of uh, making modules. She also provided you with a sample in Filipino. In another episode, Ms. Genevieve Versilis also discussed on how to make activity sheets and workbook. Ms. Mariel Balakwit also discussed to you storybook writing and the requirements in making a story. Dr. Rilin Rasa showed to you science module that was quality assured by the, by the region. She also discussed on how to make the learning activity plan and learning activity sheets. So by this time, our teacher writers already have their outputs ready for quality assurance. I, am I right? How about our quality assurance team? Are you now ready to quality assure these materials? Come, join me for today. We will be discussing the quality assurance on content and layout. For this day, we are going to do the following. We need to identify the processes involved in quality assurance, specifically on content and layout. We also need to review and evaluate self-learning modules, learning activity sheets, storybooks, all the outputs that were written by our teacher writers. And we also need to rate the quality of content in these modules or learning resources. The processes involved in quality assurance, content and layout there are four steps that we are going to remember in the quality assurance of a certain learning resource. Step one, before the review, you need to have the learning resources at hand. 
of course so that you will have a sample activity to review on next you have to have a rating sheet or a checklist and of course you need to allocate sufficient time to review the materials and then you need to scan the material initially to have a better view of what the material is all about and its organization for step two during the review you need to review the material in its entirety from page to page you need to read the content page to page cover to cover while so doing you are going to write marginal notes on the materials and then you need to check on the accuracy and up-to-dateness of information that's for during the review for step three after the review you need to summarize your findings and you need to reread your summary of findings and recommendations so that you will not uh, forget what you have written in the marginal notes and in the step four you have to make a clear copy of your findings recommendations and then you sign and uh, also include the date of your signature in the rating sheet okay are you now ready to focus on some of the indicators for quality assuring the learning resources developed by our teacher there are four foci that we are going to consider in this discussion the first one is on content focus one content under content you need uh, to know that it should be suitable to the learners level of development needs and experience now how are we going to rate this thing based on that uh, criteria we have the following rating we use the 4321 rating 4 as the highest and 1 is the low lowest so we have to rate 4 if all contents and topics are suitable to the learners level of development you need to rate 3 if there are 1 or two concepts or topics not suitable to the learner's comprehension you rate two if there are three or four concepts or topics not suitable to the learner's comprehension and you rate one if there are five or more concepts or topics not suitable to the learner's comprehension the second criterion under focus one content the material should contribute to the achievement of specific objectives of the learning area, strand, and grade level or year level for which it is intended. We are going to rate four if the material contributes to achievement of five or more specific objectives of the intended subject areas or grade level. We need to rate three if the material contributes to the achievement of three to four specific objectives of the intended subject areas and grade or year levels we rate two if the material contributes to the achievement of only one to two specific objectives of the intended subject area or learning or year level and we rate one if the material does not address any objective of the intended subject area and grade or year level number three we have material should provide for the development of higher cognitive skills such as critical thinking creativity learning by doing inquiry problem solving and etc and this was discussed uh, fully by dr rasa on the uh, Bloom's taxonomy revised Bloom's taxonomy we rate for if all topics exercises or activities in the SLM or in the learning resources develop higher cognitive skills 
We also rate three if there are one or two topics, exercises, or activities that do not develop higher cognitive skills. We rate two if there are three to four topics, exercises, or activities that do not develop higher cognitive skills. And we rate one if there are five or more topics or exercises or activities that do not develop higher cognitive skills. The material that we are going to review also should be free of ideological, cultural, religious, racial, and gender biases and prejudices. What are example of these gender biases? For example, a mother always taking care of a baby. Uh, it's a gender bias because as of these days, there should be balance of taking care of the baby between both parents. No? And we're eight four if there are no, no ideological, cultural, religious, racial, and gender biases and prejudices that are present in the material. We're eight three if there are two or one or two violations based on the social content guidelines. And this will be discussed. Social content guidelines or uh, assuring social content will also be discussed in full by Mom Florangel Arcadio. Uh, later. We read two if there are three to four violations based on social content guidelines and one if there are five or more violations based on the social content guidelines. Our material should also enhance the development of desirable values and traits. We read four if our material includes or identify uh, identify desirable values and traits that is is or are evident and or properly discussed in the material we rate three if there are one or two undesirable value or trait that is evident and or improperly discussed in the material we rate two if there are three or four undesirable values and traits that are evident and or improperly discussed in the material. And we rate one if there are five or more undesirable values and traits that are evident and improperly discussed in the material. The material should also arouse interest of target reader. Uh, we rate four if all topics, exercises, activities are interesting to the target re reader, especially if uh, you are writing for the lower grade. Uh, it should arouse. No? It should arouse interest. Number three, there are one to two topics, exercises, or activities are not interesting to the target reader. Number, uh, we rate two, not three. Number, we rate two. Uh, we need to consider also the material that arouse interest of target reader. We rate four if all topics or exercises, activities are interesting to the target reader. We rate three if there are one or two topics or exercises or activities that are not interesting to the target reader. We rate two if there are three or four topics or exercises or activities that are not interesting to the target reader. We also rate one if there are five or more topics or exercises or activities that are not interesting to the target reader. The material also should take into account that learners have different learning styles. We rate four if all topics, exercises, activities Take into account that learners differ in learning styles. We read three if there, there are one or two topics, exercises, and activities that do not differ in learning styles. We read two if there are three to four topics, exercises, activities that do not differ in learning styles. And we read one if there are five or more topics or exercises or activities that do not differ in learning styles. And we also need 
to take note that material should provide self-checks, ready-made achievement tests, or periodic review activities. If these are found in the materials that you are going to review or you will be reviewing, you are going to rate 4 if this includes review activities and is very evident in the material. We rate 3 if there are only 1 or 2 inappropriate or unsuitable review activities in the material. We rate 2 if there are 3 to 4 inappropriate or unsuitable review activities in the material. And we rate 1 if there are 5 or more inappropriate or unsuitable review activities in the materials. 9. Activities, exercises, and tasks provide for varying learning arrangements. Can be uh, the activity should be done individually or in group or dyad, triad, or other groupings. If the materials uh, have this uh, particular feature, we rate four if. Uh, there's a varying learning arrangement, uh, the uh, evident varying learning arrangement. We read three if there are one to two activities or exercises and tasks that did not consider varying learning arrangements. We read two if there are three to four activities or exercises and tasks that did not consider varying learning arrangement. We rate one if there are five or more activities or exercises and tasks that did not consider varying learning arrangements. And number 10, there should be an adequate warning or cautionary notes that are provided in topics or activities where safety and, and health are of concern, applicable only for science, EPP, MSIP, MAPI, TLE, and textbook materials. We rate 4 if there is an inclusion of adequate warning or cautionary notes were needed is evident in the materials. Just like in kindergarten, pag, pag ang bata papagamiti ng, ng gunting, dapat may mga precautionary measures or mag guide with the guidance of the parents. Number three, there are, uh, I mean, not number three, but we are going to rate three if there are one or two worrisome topics or activities without adequate warning or cautionary notes. We rate two if there are three to four worrisome topics or activities without adequate warning or cautionary notes. We rate one if there are five or more worrisome topics or activities without adequate warning or cautionary notes. And number 11, if there is a teacher support material or a parent support material in this case in our new in the new normal because our parent will serve as our para teachers, if this is applicable, our note or the support material should give enough general guidance to the parent or to the teacher. It will also give enough information about the methodology, explains the rationale behind the activities, exercises, and tasks, and tells the teacher or parents how to plan each lesson or how to deliver the lesson, and provides practical tips on teaching the skills and sub-skills. Encourage or allows the teacher or parent to use their own sources, ideas, and techniques. And the support material should be easy to use. And what are the indicators? We are going to rate four if there is an inclusion of the seven sub-criterion items that are evident or, or properly discussed in the material. We rate three if there are one or two sub-criterion in items included that are improperly discussed in the material. We rate two if there are three to four sub-criterion items included that are improperly discussed in the material. And we rate one if there are five or more sub-criterion items included that are improperly discussed in the material. 
There, these are the things that we are going to consider. There's a note. So, the following guide is used in determining if the material will require minor revisions in content. For science, MCEP, EPP, MAPE, TLE, TechVoc materials must score at least 30 points. If the materials will not reach 30 points, the material is or the materials is uh, are considered to be for major revisions if it reach 30 points or more than 30 points minor revisions in mother tongue english filipino math ap materials the material should have uh, must have a score of at least 27 points but if it does not reach 27 then the material requires major revisions. The teacher support materials must score at least 26 points. Again, if, does, if it does not reach 26, the materials require major revisions. Focus number two, under content, we have the format. For book design, we need to consider the consistency of elements, the, the simplicity of, of the illustrations, so that it will not distract the attention of the reader. We rate four for book design, for both criterion elements are sufficiently met. We rate three if only one criterion element is sufficiently met. Where it two, if both criterion elements are insufficiently met, and we rate one if both criterion elements are unacceptable. For the layout, uh, the layout should be attractive and pleasing to look at. It should have an adequate visuals in relation to texts, and it should have an harmonious blending of elements, visuals and texts. Uh, we rate four if all criterion elements are sufficiently met. We rate three on if only one criterion element is sufficiently met. We rate two if two criterion elements are insufficiently met. And we rate one if all criterion elements are unacceptable. For prints, Size of letters is appropriate to the intended user. Spaces between letters and words should facilitate reading. The font is easy to read and the printing is of good quality. There should be no broken letters. There should be even density and correct alignment. Uh, how are we going to rate this uh, print? Again, we will use the 4 to 1 rating four if all four criterion elements are appropriate and or suitable to the intended user we rate three if one of the four criterion elements is inappropriate and or unsuitable to the intended user and we rate two if two or four criterion elements two of the four criterion elements are inappropriate and or unsuitable to the intended user and we rate one if three of the four criterion elements are inappropriate and or unsuitable to the intended users the criterion being discussed here is on this side no that 3.1 up to 3.4 uh, for visuals uh, this talks about illustrations photos charts diagrams and graphs and others so we have here the criterions or criteria simple and easily recognizable the visual should be simple and easily recognizable for lower grades uh, the visuals should be simple uh, to avoid disruption of of uh, understanding the the message of the illustration Clarity and supplement the text, properly labeled or captioned if applicable, and it should be authentic, meaning original. The illustration should be original, attractive and compelling, culturally relevant. 
We are going again. We are going to rate this one with four if all six criterion elements are appropriate and or suitable to the intended user. And we rate three if one or two of the six criterion elements are inappropriate and or unsuitable to the target user. We rate one if five to six criterion elements are inappropriate and or unsuitable to the target user. Format for five the elements. Uh, in the elements, we need to consider the concepts, photos, tables, statistical data, graphs, excerpts, frameworks, original compositions, musical pieces, and other text types. These are used in the material where properly cited, acknowledged, or with permission to use. Uh, to rate this one, we, we need to rate four if all borrowed elements and materials used were properly cited. See, for example, the photos in the learning resource uh, are taken from the internet, then there should be a, a proper permission, no? with, with proper permission from the author and also other other pieces just like musical pieces if there's an audio to be to be heard for the learners there should be an acknowledgement or a permission to use number uh, we rate three if there are one or two borrowed elements and materials that were improperly or not cited we rate two if there are three or four borrowed elements and materials that were improperly or not cited we rate one if there are five or more borrowed elements and materials that were improperly not cited. All sources of borrowed materials were not cited. We need to know that the material must score at least 15 for the formats, at least 15 points to be required minor revisions under this criterion. When we see at least 15 points, if the material uh, reach 15 points, that requires minor revision, but if it does not reach 15 points, it requires major revisions. Focus three on the presentation and organization of the material, written materials or printed materials or any learning resource. First, we need to consider the presentation if it is interesting, engaging, and understandable. We rate four if all topics are engaging, interesting, and understandable. We rate three if there are one or two topics that are not engaging, interesting, and understandable. We rate two if there are three or two four topics that are not engaging, interesting, and understandable. And we rate one if there are five or more topics that are not engaging, interesting, and understandable. Number two, under presentation and organization, we have there is logical and smooth flow of ideas. Uh, num uh, we rate four if all topics, exercises, or activities within the lessons are logically presented and the flow is uh, smooth. Mm, we rate three if there are one or two topics or exercises or activities within the lessons that are not logically presented and the flow is not so smooth. We rate also two if there are three or four topics or exercises or activities within the lessons that are not logically, logically presented and the flow is not so smooth. And we rate one if there are five or more topics or exercises that are not logically presented and the flow is distracted. For vocabulary level, we have to rate four if the vocabulary used in the learning resource is suitable to the target reader. In the lower grades for kindergarten, there should be uh, one to 20 words, vocabulary words in a page. Uh, in other, in higher grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, there are uh, maximum number of words. No? Uh, we rate three if there are one or two words not suitable to the target readers. Uh, two, 
where rate 2 if there are 3 to 4 words not suitable to the target readers, and where rate 1 if there are 5 or more words not suitable to the target readers. The length of sentences is suited to the target user. Okay, for grade 1, one line sentence or two line sentences, two sentences in a page or three sentences in a page. The higher the grade level, the more number of sentences. The lower the grade level, the lesser number of sentences in a page. So number, uh, we rate four if the length of sentences are suitable to the target user. We rate three if there are one or two sentences not suitable to the target user. We rate two if there are three to four sentences not suitable to the target user. And we rate one if there are five or more sentences not suitable to the target user. We need to take note that the material must score at least 15 points to be required minor revisions under this criterion. For focus number four, accuracy and up-to-dateness of information, conceptual errors, we need to look into conceptual errors, factual errors, computational errors, grammatical errors. So for conceptual errors, we rate four if there's no conceptual error found. We rate three if one to two conceptual errors are found. We rate 2 if there are 3 or 4 conceptual errors found. And we rate 1 if there are 5 or more conceptual errors found. For factual errors, we rate 4 if there's no factual error found. Sorry for that. That's factual. We rate 3 if 1 to 2 factual errors found. We rate 2 if there, there are 3 to 4 factual errors found. We rate one if there are five or more factual errors found. We are talking here about facts, no? Grammatical errors. We rate four if there's no grammatical error found. Three if there's one to two grammatical errors found in the learning resource material that you review. We rate two if there are three to four grammatical errors found, and we rate one if there are five or more grammatical errors found. For computational errors, especially in science, balancing equations, in mathematics, and higher math, and all, all those that involve with numbers. So we are going to look into computational errors. If no computational error found, we rate four. If there's one to two computational errors found in a learning resource, we rate three. If there's three to four computational errors found, we rate two. And if there are five or more computational errors found, we rate one. For obsolete information, if the information that are found in the reviewed materials, if there are obsolete information that are found in the reviewed materials, and we are going to rate that one if uh, there, there's no obsolete error, we rate four. If there's one to two obsolete errors found, we rate three. If three to four errors, obsolete errors found, we rate two. And if there are five or more obsolete errors found in the materials, we rate one. For other errors such as in illustrations, diagrams, pictures, maps, graphs, and tables, we rate four if there's no error found. We rate three if one to two errors found. We rate two if three to four errors found, one if there are five or more errors found. We have to take note that the material must score at least 20 points to be required minor revisions under this criterion. For layout requirements, typography, the attributes of a legib legible typeface. Uniform letter proportions within the font. There should be a uniform letter proportions within the font. This involves thickness of strokes, length of letters, and evenness of color when seen in masse. When we say thickness of strokes, 
there should be a balance of strokes in between letters or numbers if in that case numbers contrast within the font you you may use italics or bold face to contrast with regular weight of uh, roman in uh, style in lower grades if the words especially in mother tongue if the words is in english borrowed word the the text should be in bold face for example the word uh, camera camera is borrowed in english so it should be written in bold face in the mother tongue Clear symbol identification. All symbols should be clearly distinguished so that the numeral 1 cannot be mistaken for a capital I. And the capital L should not be mistaken as a lower L. And the upper half of the letter should be particularly recognizable. And there should be a good linkage of one letter to another when composed together. And printability should also matter there should be no ink traps the counters of lowercase b d o p q a e should be open for unit chapter or lesson head and subheads we may use a font uh, style century gothic alphabeto helvetica franklin gothic and times new roman for body text we can also use Century Gothic, Alphabeto, Century School Book, Bookman, and Times New Roman. So, here are uh, this table is the recommended type size and the R to text ratio of textbooks in the print or any print materials in that case. Uh, for the first column, we have the grade level. The uh, next column is on the point size, next is on the line space, and the last column is on the R to text ratio. For kindergarten, the text size is 18, and the heads should be 32 to 18 points, with the line space of 4 points, and the R to text ratio is 75% is to 25%, meaning there are more visuals than text in the kindergarten, 75, 25. For grade one, the text should be 16 points, the heads 30 to 16 points, the line space should be four points, and the R to text ratio 65 is to 35. 65 visuals, 35 texts. For grade two, we have 16 for the texts, for the heads, we have 30 to 16 point with 4 points in the line space. And the R to text ratio is 60% is to 40. For grade 3, the text is 14 in size. The heads is 28 to 14 points. And the line space is 4 point with R to text ratio 50-50. For grade 4, we have text is 14. Heads is 28 to 14. And the line space is 3, and the R to text ratio is 40, 60. Grade 5 and 6, the text is 11 to 12 points. The heads is 24 to 12 points. The line space is 2 points, and the R to text ratio is 30% is to 70%. In high school, uh, same with 5 and 6. Uh, 11 to 12 points in text, the heads is 24 to 11. And the line space is 2 point with 30% is to 70% R to text ratio. It can be noticed that in this case, the R to text ratio, the higher the grade, the lesser is the R or the ratio for the R is lesser compared to the lower grade. For word spacing and alignment, body text for kinder to grades 1 to 3 books, the uh, set body text flush left flush left or align left ragged right to avoid hyphenated words because in kindergarten to grade one or especially in grade one to grade three uh, the word should not be hyphenated because they are starting to read pa for body text for grades four five and six books 
uh, the body text should be justified, uh, left and right aligned. Text copy for secondary school books and all teachers' materials, justified again. And line with is 27 PICAS minimum and 32 PICAS maximum. Background tint for text and art overlays, 10% tint, 120 lines per inch or LPI screen ruling minimum with 20% tint maximum. The print resolution, resolution of the text should be at least 600 dots per inch. An output resolution of 120 dots, uh, dots per inch on film is recommended. Uh, what do we mean by dots per inch? Uh, in camera, it is called as pixels. But in text, it is called DPI or dots per inch. The finer, the, the, the finer or the higher the number of dots per inch, the finer the text. Page layout. We need to consider the readability of the page, the eye movement. Uh, our eyes move from left to right and top to bottom. So application of design principles, the balance. Uh, we have to consider the balance in text and graphics or between graphics or illustrations and others. And the legibility of pages. Under legibility of pages, the body text in facing pages shall be equal in length, except where either page contains the end or the chapter or a lesson. Kung end na, na uh, kung, kung end na, but there are still uh, spaces, lower spaces, then you can proceed with another page with the next chapter. There should be at least two lines of text below a text head or at the foot of a page. So, towards the end of the page, uh, there should be at least two lines. If there's only one line and then the other lines is found on the next, you should move the, the lines on the previous page. All beginning pages for units, chapters, should consistently fall either on the right or left-hand page. Camera-ready pages should include all graphics and visuals. Pages should not have bad breaks which affect readability. There, this is what we call bad breaks, widow or our orphan page. When we see orphan, uh, in, in a page, in a certain page, there's, in a previous page, for example, one line is being left uh, in the previous page and the other sentences is found on the next page. The, the, the line in the previous page is what we call as the orphan and the lines or the sentences that are found on the next page are what we call the widow, widow pages. And these are an example of bad breaks, bad breaks in a layout, in a page layout. And it should be avoided because it is not good to look at uh, to look at that kind of material especially if you are you are reviewing um, a test say for example a multiple type of test the steam is in the the steam of the question is found on the the, the previous page and the choices is found on the next page that should not be a that should not uh, good to look at. That's not good to look at. So you better transfer the stem of the question to the next page. We're done. Let me know if you got something from this lecture. Any questions? Please write your aha points on your learning from this lecture in the live comment because I will be reading that one. Please write your your aha points or the learning that you get from this lecture in the comments if you have questions you can write the questions on the link that will be provided to you by the LRMDS team of our division are you now ready to quality assure the outputs of your teachers using the learning your your learning for today if you have questions again, please feel free to ask. Let me end my lecture with this. 
assuring the quality of the learning resources coupled with ensuring meaning you need to ensure insurance policy ensured the quality in the delivery of the instructions mean ensuring quality of learners so there's if there's a quality resources learning resources plus quality instruction will be equal to quality learners good day and thank you for listening hope to answer your questions later bye thank you so much ma'am san for that very comprehensive presentation we are sure that our audience on air have learned a lot from it This time, we have another speaker who will speak on social content, educational soundness, and language content quality assurance. Friends, please help me welcome Ms. Florangel S. Arcadio, our Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics. Best morning, everyone. Welcome to this last day of the series of webinar workshop on learning resource development process. I am Florangel Subaino Arcadio of DepEd Shergao. For the past days, I know that you have gained insights on how to develop quality modules, activity sheets, SLMs, and other learning materials, which are very essential in our present situation. And these were shared by the, some experts, and I know that for now, you are equipped with knowledge in that particular endeavor. To complete the package, as writers and evaluators, it is important that you must also be aware of the different guidelines on how to quality assure the materials. Just a while ago, Mom Sandra shared about content and layout. And this time, we will focus on social content and educational soundness. Our focus for this session or the objectives are to gain insights on how to evaluate quality assure the learning resources and to practice the process using the tools for evaluation. The set of standards and guidelines aims to achieve the following. The learning resources that are free from stereotypes. Learners who has developed desirable values of nationalism, justice, moral uprightness, inclusivity, understanding, compassion in others. And also for the real realization of DepEd core values. Makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. The social content covers the whole facets of Filipino values, culture, and practices. It is intended to help users be mindful and responsible of the accuracy and appropriateness of the messages to be used in the learning resources and must be in accordance with the government educational thrusts. It also refers to themes or topics for which the DepEd prescribes certain guidelines when these themes or topics are included or referred to in lessons in the learning resources. 
for the themes. First is that the Filipino learners. The Filipino learner is the heart of all educative process. It is in this principle that the state shall protect and promote the right of every citizen to quality education through relevant teaching learning processes and quality learning resources. Hence, the K-12 program aims to provide mastery of concepts, enhance competence, and develop 21st century skills, and produce quality assured learning resources in order to foster productive and competitive lifelong learners. So in making the material, the material should portray the learners as multifaceted with physical, intellectual, and psycho-emotional, spiritual, and socio-cultural traits. The material should highlight the dignity of learners and communicate respect for their rights. It should promote respect for the rights of the children, elderly persons with disability or the PWDs, the indigenous peoples or the IPs, pregnant women, workers, and other vulnerable sectors of the society. And it should avoid the depiction of physical, sexual, verbal, and mental abuse of adults and children, as well as violent sports and entertainment. Avoid featuring or including situations and materials that encourage or rationalize crime, violence, and the maligning of people. Second is the Philippine nation and society. The quality learning resources should ensure preservation, enrichment, and dynamic evolution of a Filipino culture that subsequently strengthen national consciousness among learners and fortify their moral fiber of being true Filipinos. Learning resources should promote the idea among learners that Filipino culture is a shared identity as a nation. It is a culture that gives a sense of belongingness and a source of knowledge and pride of being a Filipino and a citizen of the world. Third is that citizenship and social responsibility. This refers to the state of being a member of a particular country vested with the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities. As a Filipino citizens, the learner must be aware of their duties and responsibilities to be able to contribute to the achievement of a national development. Fourth is individuals and social identity. Individual identity refers to quality principle or belief that makes a person or group different from others. This may include aspects of our life that we have no control over, such as where we grew up or the color of our skin, as well as choices we make in life, such as how we spend our time and what we believe in. On the other hand, social identity can provide people with a sense of self-esteem and a framework for socializing, and it can influence their behavior. Social identity relates to how we identify ourselves in relation to others according to what we have in common. The, the material should avoid views or opinions that highlight stereotypes and encourage cultural, moral, and social insensitiveness against particular social classes, gender groups, political affiliations, cultural, or religious groups. It should avoid inaccurate, unnecessary, or inappropriate portrayal of or reference to the physical appearance, cultural customs, social classes, 
symbols, observances, festivals, dress, names, or language of any ethnic group or nationality. The learning material should avoid sexist language, bias, prejudice, and stereotyping of various genders in the depiction of behaviors, home and family roles, professions, occupations, and contributions to society. The fifth one is all about social institutions. When you make materials, then it has family or religious faith groups, works insti work institutions, and commercial entities. These are social institutions that provide structures and mechanism of order and cooperation that govern the behaviors of its members. It is composed of systems of behavioral and relationship patterns that are densely interwoven and enduring and function across an entire society. They order and structure the behavior of individuals by means of their normative character. When your material, the, I mean the material that you develop, has a picture or deals about a family, see to it that it should res show respect for different family patterns. What do we mean by different family patterns? When we talk of family, does not only mean a father, a mother, kuya, ate, and the baby. Uh, it doesn't affect if there are only three members of the family that is still called a family. Then, uh, it should also promote responsible parenthood, which includes shared parenting, shared home management, and shared decision-making in various areas of home life. For religious or faith groups, when you have this in your material, you have to see to it that you use religious references, symbols, celebrations, and language free, free of bias, and only when it is appropriate in relation to the subject matter. Then ensure that any reference to a religious group is appropriate, accurate, and authentic in relation to the setting and or period of history in which they are presented. For the work institutions, it should present and promote a balanced and just relationship between workers and managers in the depiction of their roles and responsibilities. It should present public servants such as police officers, soldiers, and government officials as responsible, accountable, trustworthy, and working for the common good of the community. For commercial entities, this is the thing that you need to consider, avoid, may I reiterate, avoid mentioning commercial brand names and corporate logos in text or showing them in illustrations or photographs. Instead, writers or you being the writers may invent or fabricate a brand in order to fulfill the purpose of the lesson without promoting real-life brand names and products. And also, avoid incorporating any form of commercial solicitation and advertising like promotional materials, chain letters, and pyramid schemes. Next is all about gender. The next theme is the gender. Gender-sensitive learning resources also consider the political, economic, social, and cultural factors underlying gender-based discrimination and socialization of men and women 
into certain opportunities. We should consider that we are um, we are already accepting um, the third kind of gender, which is for that LGBT. Then we have the media, technology, and communication. The development of technologies is evident with the existence of modern gadgets and equipments. The advent of various websites has brought great impacts in lives of everyone. A high percentage of learners are already embracing the world of technology. Hence, appropriate digital or non-print learning resources are needed for effective and efficient use. And that is what we are doing now with this new normal situation. We are using technology in communication. The K-12 curriculum promotes the development of information and media literacy skills among the 21st century learners. Next, we have the health, nutrition, and wellness. This theme looks into the various aspects of health, nutrition, and wellness issues that would make learning resources responsive to the realization of the K-12 curriculum. It should promote proper nutrition and avoid featuring junk foods and their enjoyment. Promote disaster risk management and preparedness. Promote or discourage the habitual use of tobacco. May I reiterate? Discourage the habitual use of tobacco and alcohol and the use of narcotics, restricted drugs, and other substances. Then promote safety measures, especially with this new normal situation. When you make a material, you should consider our environment. Environment. The earth is not simply a warehouse of resources to serve human needs, but also an integrated, interdependent functioning system upon which all life forms depend for survival. Failure of one will affect the ecology and other system and would eventually threaten the subsistence of human beings. It is necessary for everyone, especially the learners, to treat the nat natural environment with love and respect through learning resources. So the material that you're going to make should portray a lifestyle that contributes towards reducing the impacts of climate change. Portray efforts to conserve and care for the country's natural resources and protect the well-being of the environment. Promote personal and community involvement in environmental management for sustainable development. And also encourage humane treatment and respect for all life forms. And those are the guidelines that we should consider in order to make our learning materials adherent to social content. At this point in time, we will proceed to educational soundness. So, with all that you have heard about the social content, I know that you started to think, to reflect, if the materials you have made or the materials you have developed followed the guidelines for social content. And wait, there's more for educational soundness. You will check your materials later if it also have followed all the guidelines for educational soundness. So the qualities of the learning resource, teaching resource, and professional development materials. 
are as follows. One, you have to see to it that the, the content is accurate and reflects the way in which knowledge is conceptualized within the domain. Find out your learner material if it supports deepening of knowledge within the content domain. If it presents controversial issues with balance and fairness in accordance with the DepEd curriculum policies where these apply. Find out if the material you have developed uses language and symbols of the content domain and its ways of representation and it supports learners in developing and using them. The following are used correctly and appropriately. Find it out. One, the terms and expressions. Are the terms and expressions within the level of the learners? It could easily be understood by the learners. Then we also have the symbols and notations. The diagrammatic presentations, representation, and also the graphical representation. You have to see to it if it is appropriate for the age level, for the grade level of the learners. And then assist the learner with identifying and differentiating between different points of view and perspective presented. Find out if the material uses content in ways that are real to life, authentic for learners or users, if they are not simplified or trivialized, makes sense to learners within their imaginary or real world, if they are realistic within the relevant context. The material should enhance learners' social capital, their knowledge of how the world works, and how to make a way in it. So the key word here is that the material should be realistic and within the real context of the learner. And um, it has something to do with the real life situation. Let us say, for example, if you are making a material in math and you are asking one of the questions there, for example, in the different parts of the material, which uh, I believe this, this were mentioned by Ma'am Raza in her lecture about the module yesterday. Uh, for example, um, there's a question that says, how many meters are there? Uh, how many meters are there? Or uh, another, let us say, if the, if the problem states that um, the, the, table, the table measures five kilometers. So in that sense, there is no such table as long as five, the length, I mean, is five kilometers. So that is not realistic. That is not in the real sense of the child. No? So it could uh, create confusion. Always remember that in making a material, focus on the concept. The concept should be um, within or relevant to the real context of the learner. Then we also have reflects the profile of the target learner user for the curriculum or training area. The material should present the same idea to learners, it uses a multiple, multi-directional modes. So it can be visual text. Example, in your material, you will present pictures or diagrams. Also, can be verbal or written text. Symbolic representations will also do, or oral text or spoken. And then both static and dynamic images. The learning 
materials should also um, you should also see to it that the learning objectives are made explicit to learners or the users. The target learners or the users are clearly identified. Talking about academic level or the technical ability, the demographics addressed. Then see to it that the content is structured to scaffold learning provides an opportunity for learners or users to obtain feedback either within or outside resource. Then the prerequisite knowledge skills are clearly identified and their connections to prior and future learning are well established. So there is connectivity from the previous lesson to the next lesson. The material should be easy to use. Time and effort to use, it is reasonable. And the language is appropriate for the intended learner or user. Again, the material that you're going to develop should be easy. Time and effort to use it is reasonable and the language the language should be within the level of the learner or the user then clear instructions for use are provided the purpose there the intended outcomes are explicit then the learning and information design is intuitive that means to say for example the user knows what to do and how to do it we should always remember especially if the one you're making is a module or with this present situation even if it is an activity sheet always remember that the material should be used by the child without the help of the teacher so it should be made very simple the language used should be within their level then the learning resource can be accessed by learners or users in deprived, depressed, and underserved areas and communities. So this means that when you make a material, make materials that is accessible by learners even if they belong to a very remote area. And also, the resource may not, may not, this is what I told you a while ago, the resource may not require teacher or may not require a facilitator. No? So, and it could be used effectively in varied learning environments and learning sequences. So, this means that the instructions there should be made clear the terms the materials should be um, in different language it could be in English it could be in Filipino of course naturally for grades or kinder grades 1 to 3 it is expected that the material should be in the local dialects because um, that is that is the that is what is expected of them to learn to speak and um, the instruction should be the delivery of instruction should be in mother tongue based then the, that is a, again for k to three learners then the learning resource connects to learners personal local knowledge and experience so that is why it is contextualize the keyword there is contextualization so that the learner could connect to uh, his experience linguistic and cultural experience the local or community geographic conditions do not include 
in your material, if you will talk about crossing uh, from one place to another using a bridge, if there is no bridge in your locality, that should be localized, contextualized within the context. Do not talk about things that are not found in your place or in your locality. The things uh, which are not common for the children. So, um, you give materials or examples that are within the area. The individual and family circumstances, including gender, abilities, and economic conditions. Then, the interest and degree of engagement, in particular, addresses the differently abled learners differently abled learners so the resource next is that the resource does not confront or embarrass learners in any or all of the following ways require learner to expose personal data which may embarrass them please avoid this one invade learners privacy this is a big no-no. Unfavorably or stereotypically compare family or community. And then unnecessarily or indiscriminately confront cultural beliefs or practices. And equivalent or alternative access to information is available for learners with diverse needs. Of course, we have diverse learners. Naturally, our learners also have diverse needs. One is the identical content or activity is presented in different modalities. And different activities that achieve the same learning outcomes are available. Because our learners are, di are diverse, that is why uh, we have different strategies, different um, modalities to use so that the learners could achieve whatever objective we have or the goal that we have in that particular session. So then, I have presented the qualities of learning resource, teaching resource, professional development material. Our purpose of letting you know so that um, with the materials that you have developed, you can also, uh, you, you can determine if it is okay or if the material achieved a general level of educational soundness, which is very important being a writer and an evaluator. So, of course, as a writer, you should know all these things. And most importantly, if you are an evaluator, you could not evaluate without knowing these different guidelines on social content and educational soundness. And to get acquainted with the tool, I will be showing you samples of the tool as well as the summary of findings, corrections, and review for the DepEd developed learning resources. Okay, so this is now the evaluation tool for content. Please take a look at this if you are or a writer and an evaluator or a reviewer should know all these things. So we have, um, there are instructions there. The first thing that you're going to write is the learning area. What learning area is that particular activity or the module you are creating or uh, should I say any learning resource material. Then the grade level and the title of that module activity or learning material. And then the instruction is very clear. Carefully read the learning resource page by page. 
to evaluate the LR for compliance of standards indicated in the criterion items under the six factors below. Then put a check mark in the appropriate column beside its criterion item. item. If your answer is no, cite specific pages, briefly indicate the errors found, and give your recommendation in the attached summary of findings, corrections, and review form. I will be showing to you later the summary fi of findings, uh, corrections, and review form. Then, write not applicable for non-criterion items that does not apply in the LR evaluated. The number four, based on the number of criterion items, mark yes. Under its factor, mark the appropriate column to indicate if the LR complied or not to the standards. Then for factors with items marked not applicable, count the total applicable criterion items and multiply this with 75% to determine the cutoff for compliance. So, we have, again, there are six factors that we have to consider. One is, we have factor one. This is intellectual property rights compliance. I think this was discussed by Ms. Bindin Solis, all about the IPR. So, if the material is uh, compliant to IPR, the learning resource has no copyright violations. So if you think that the material you are making has no copyright violation, then check yes. If you are the developer or the reviewer. The copyrighted text and visuals used in the LR are cited. Meaning to say, if you use uh, pictures or text from the internet, or from other materials, you are going to uh, cite it in the materials you are making. So if it is cited, you check yes. No if it is not cited. Then the copyright materials used in the LRs are accurately cited. The references are properly cited in the bibliography. But if you did not put all the references in the bibliography, so of course, uh, check um, the, the column with no. In this, note that at least, oh, take note of this, at least three criterion items must be marked yes to indicate compliance to this factor. If upon evaluating you only have two check for yes so what should be your answer for this is it compliant or not compliant or complied or not complied so of course it is not complied if only two Then, for factor two, this is all about the learning competencies. So content is consistent with the targeted DepEd learning competencies. So LCs intended for the learning area and grade level. Of course, if you are um, making a material, you have your plan as to what grade level is that. So, but then, for example, I will, I will be talking examples in math, because you know already. Uh, if, for example, your material is intended for grade one level, and then you are already, um, by looking at the reviewer, some of the activities there, found there, uh, talk about higher mathematics, which are not intended for grade one. So, of course, that is a no-no. And then, the, this item 
must be marked yes to indicate compliance. For factor 2, if it is no, automatically it is not complied. And then, for factor 3, instructional design and organization. So, number 1 is that the LR contributes to the achievement of specific objectives of the learning area and grade level for which it is intended. Sequencing of contents and activities with its, within its lesson facilitates achievement of the objectives. There is proper sequence of the activity. Let us say, from, from lower, from lots to huts. Then content is suitable to the target learner's level of development, needs, and experience. Content reinforces, enriches, and or leads to the mastery of the targeted learning competencies intended for the learning area and grade level. Number five, content is logically developed and organized throughout the material. It means to say that the lessons or the activities are arranged from simple to complex, from observable to abstract. Then number six, the LR contains useful introduction reviews, summarizes, and other devices that facilitates smooth progression from one lesson to another. That is the transfer of learning from one lesson to another. And number seven, development of lessons allow for review, comparison, and integration with previous lessons. And number eight, motivational strategies. That means that there are overview, advanced organizers, puzzles, games, and others that are being provided in that material. So if it, you found it uh, in the material, so as a reviewer, you have to check yes. The LR uses various teaching and learning strategies to meet individual differences or different learning styles, if applicable. Then the LR develops higher cognitive skills that includes critical thinking skills, creativity learning by doing, problem solving, and of course, the 21st century skills. If the material, uh, upon scrutinizing the material, you found out that it's only uh, for lots, it only develop lower uh, order thinking skills, or should I say, the material is really very, very easy. When it comes to Bloom's taxonomy, it only refers to the lower level. That's the remembering and understanding. So of course, do not check yes, but you have to check no, because it is not evident there. The number 11, the LR enhances the development of desirable values and traits such as so we have pride in being a Filipino, striving for excellence, helpfulness, teamwork, cooperation, desire to learn new things, ability to know right from wrong, critical and creative thinking, then specific attitudes or scientific attitudes and reasoning, love for country, unity, honesty and trust trustworthiness, respect, and productive work, or any other. If some values you found in the materials are not found here in the, the items given, so you are going to specify. So you put it there in others, or please specify what are those values or traits that are being found in the materials. And at least for factor three, at least eight criterion items must be marked yes. At least. If there are only seven, there are only seven or six or below that, that are being marked yes. So um, you have there 
complied and not complied. So if it is less than 8, you mark not complied. But if it is more than 8 or 8 or more, so check complied. Then the fourth factor is all about instructional quality. In the instructional quality, it includes content and information that are being accurate. Then content and information are up to date. So you might be giving content that's not um, applicable in our present situation. So that is not being up to date. And I think that was discussed by Mom Sandra for the content. So the LR is free from any social content violations. You see? No? So if found that there are gender bias, let us say for example, talking about any violations I have mentioned in the social content, so that should be marked no. The LR is free from factual errors. The facts that you should be given in your material should be authentic and reliable. So for example, if in, the, in your material you're, you're saying that the, the number of uh, COVID patients in a particular area is like this and that, make sure that the information you're giving is true. No? And you have to write it down there, what is the source of your information? Where did you get that information? That should be, so that, uh, that, is, that is really uh, authentic. The information is true and not factual. So the LR is free from computational errors. This is true, especially in mathematics. So sometimes I have experienced that. I have checked materials in which I have evaluated materials in which it committed uh, computational errors. So please uh, make sure that the computations you have in your material is really correct. And LR is free from grammatical errors. Okay? So with this factor, factor four, at least five criterion items must be marked yes. So it could, um, you could check, check, I mean, you could check complied if at least five. There are six items, so you only have to get one mistake for this item. And then factor five, it's all about assessment. The LR provide, pro provides useful measures and information that help the teacher evaluate learner's progress in mastering the target competencies. Naturally, the materials you're making should include assessment. So assessments are aligned with the specific objectives and content. Make sure that there is connectivity between the objective and the assessment. The LR provides self-checks and ready-made achievement tests and or review activities. And the LR provides variety of assessment types. Then assessments must have clear demonstration, examples, instruction, and or rubric to serve as guide on how this will be used. And the rubric should be clear, should be brief and concise, could easily be understood by the learner. Then number six, we have the variety of activities within the LR are utilized to ensure active engagement of the learners. So at least in this criterion, uh, there should be five that will be marked yes, so that uh, you could also be um, considered complied, or the material could be considered complied in this particular factor. And factor six, this is the last factor, is all about readability. Of course, 
the vocabulary level is adapted to target users experience and understanding within the level of the child you use words that are very simple and easily could and be understood by the learners then the length of sentences is suited to the comprehension level of the target user sentences and paragraph structures are varied and appropriate to the target user there is a logical and smooth flow of ideas within a lesson and from lesson to lesson then there is also consistently good use of transition device to focus on the main topics and signal a change of a topic there is a very good transition from one topic to the next topic then the lessons the instructions and the exercises questions and activities are clear to the target user so with this there are six uh, six under this factor six also there are six components so therefore uh, at least five criterion must be marked yes so that you can you can have you could check the complied less than that of course you have to check not complied and then uh, the next is uh, you are going to put your or to check you put a check mark if it is for minor revision for the if the material is for minor revision major revision or for field validation of course what will happen after after doing this this will be given back to the writer so that the writer would know if the material he or she uh, she developed is or passed the the criterion for this module making or learning resource material making okay then So, we can consider that a minor revision, if this material is found compliant to the minimum requirements in all six factors, then revision based on the recommendations included in the summary of findings, corrections, and review form, and LR with marginal notes, and those marginal notes uh, it should be implemented for the major revision this material is non-compliant if for all the factors let us say for example for factor one two three four five six and most mostly the remarks there is not complied so that is considered major revision so this uh, non-compliant to the requirements in one or more factors revision based on the recommendation uh, included in the summary of findings corrections and review form and lr with marginal notes must be implemented then for field validation this material is found compliant to all factors with no corrections and i think this is what we are aiming for that the materials we are developing I could have a check on this for field validation so when we talk of field validation that will be uh, that will be sent to schools for trial or to the learners for trial then below we have uh, I or we certify this is the certification that this evaluation report and recommendations in the summary report are my own and have been made without any undue influence from others so evaluator or evaluators then 
the name of the evaluator, and then the signature and the date accomplished. So this is how you are going to fill up this evaluation tool. So it is very important that you are going to look into the details of the materials being developed by the teacher in order to come up with a quality learning resource material. So this is the template for the summary of findings, corrections, and review. As what I have said, um, from the evaluation tool, if there are things that you have, um, you found uh, with, with the material, uh, you were able to see things that should not supposed to be placed in that material or some errors, whatever, you're going to put it here in the summary of findings, corrections, and review template. So just the same, you have to write down the learning material, the grade level, and the type of, of LR, or the type of learning resource. What is that? Is that a SIM? Is that a SLM activity sheet or module? Then the title. So, accomplish the summary report based on the marginal notes in the learning resource and the findings guided by the criterion items in the evaluation tools for content, language, and design and layout. For each error found, write chronologically the page number and paragraph or line number where it was seen. Provide a description of the error and indicate whether the finding is a content, a language or design and layout type of error, and then write specific recommendation on how to improve the errors found. Then finally, you're going to provide a final recommendation based on the decision made on the accomplished evaluation tools for content, language, design, and layout. So the template, uh, here is a sample of the template. First, paragraph, line, page number, in chronological order. That means to say, you have to look into the material from page one up to the last page. You have to examine every page of the material. And in that particular page, try to look into everything. The content, the layout, the design. I know everything was explained clearly to you. Uh, particularly on the design and the layout. And if you have, I think if you have your LR in your schools or districts, uh, they will be the in charge of that. But as the reviewer, spe specifically, you focus on the content and language. Then, the brief description of error findings or observation. What is that? What's, what's the error all about? And what is the type of error? Is it all about design? Is the error all about content? Is it all about um, language? If, if it has committed grammatical errors, whatever. If it has committed factual errors. And then specific recommendations for improving the errors, findings, observations. Then in the next columns we have remarks. Remarks to be accomplished by the development team. So of course, with the marginal, marginal notes, with the comments that you made using the tool, the, the, the first tool that I have shown, uh, you have to make this summary. And as what I have said, that will be given back to the developer, to the writer, to implement the comments and the suggestions. So if it is implemented, so write down or check implemented. If it is not implemented, you check not implemented. And there must be uh, some reasons for not implementing the suggestion of the evaluators. And just the same, for final recommendation, 
So you have the minor revision, the major revision, and the field validation. And that should always be signed by the reviewers or the evaluators. I will show to you a sample uh, of this template that is being filled up. Okay, so here's a sample. So I made this one when we had our uh, national training for this. So um, we have individual summary report or team summary report. This is because uh, we, we were told to do it individually and then later by team or by group. So this is my individual findings. The learning area is mathematics. The grade level is grade 7 and the type of learning resource that was given to me was a module. And then the title of the material is all about the real number system, measurement and scientific notation. Okay, so this is how you are going to fill it up. Now, in the paragraph line, in the first column, so I... I have noticed that there's an error for on page two. And what is that error all about? A brief description of the error. You are going to write down the brief description. So the unit number of title and title is not in proper place. No? So not in proper place as I see it. And then, if that is the case, what is the type of error? So the type of error, I put it there, DL. By the way, I think there is, at the bottom, there is a legend. The type of error, C, if the error is on content. L, if the error is for language. And then DL, DL, if the error is on design and layout. So do not write the... the the word simply put the first letters so we have okay so i was able to find many many problems in that material so we have a brief description or specific recommendation my recommendation for on that particular error is that the application of the principles of layout and design focusing on hierarchy and proximity should be applied. And then for page two, again, uh, there I found the presence of grammatical error on page two, paragraph one. So uh, my suggestion is review the subject verb agreement. Then page two, again, paragraph one, not capitalized word. So that is L, again, for the language. Then uh, recommendation, words written after the period should be capitalized. Okay, so just like that. Then we have here for page two, paragraph two. I found that the, the illustrations are too close from each other. And so, uh, I, the type of error, I put it there, design and layout. And then, what is my recommendation? Needs breathing space. At least, there is a space in between illustrations. And then, uh, page 2, paragraph 2, the given quantity in the problem is not specific. So make it specific and let her see that is for content. Then page two, paragraph two, amount given is not consistent. So again, that is for content. So that is, that is all. For page four, I also have seen a factual error. Then that is on content. That is because the defi definition of whole number 
was not correct. So, my suggestion is that review the definition of whole numbers. Okay, this one. So, I have seen a lot of problems in that content. So, a content, de design and layout, and also in the language, the questions, something like that. So, factual error. So, with that, what is my recommendation? My recommendation is major revision. Because when I filled up the evaluation tool, uh, some of the items there were not being complied. So, I have it there, major revision. The material requires major revision. And it should be given back to the developer. Then, uh, I wrote there, the evaluator. Of course, my name. And I made this one last September 4, 2019. And we had our national training in Davao. So, this is how you are going to evaluate, uh, review materials that have been made by the developers. And of course, um, we, should, we should make materials that are quality for the good of our school children. Okay, so with this, according to ben Benjamin Franklin, and I quote, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So in this connection, we will really uh, let you get involved in order to learn. So you need to practice, to practice evaluating materials so that you could apply the knowledge, the insights you have learned from us since day one up to this last day of this webinar. So I believe and I learned that each one of you has developed a learning material. And as output of the session, you are going to fill up an evaluation tool using your developed material. Meaning to say, you evaluate your own material. Just to check if you are able to comply all the guidelines in uh, the evaluation tool. So, again, you, you will really learn if you get involved. So with this, I hope that everything is clear and you are, you are now ready to try out, to evaluate or review the learning materials that you have. And this is to come up with the quality and meaningful materials needed by our learners. Always remember that we are doing this for the good of our school children to come up with a quality material. In the end, our goal is drawing out the best learning resource possible. With this, I would say thank you very much. God bless everyone. God bless Shergal. Thank you so much, Mam Jing, for the discussion. Again, if you have queries or clarifications about quality assurance, just post it in our chat box. Our speakers are with us this time. Mam Arcadio has given you the instruction for your workshop. You may submit your output online. A link for the submission of your output will be posted in the LRMDS FB page and in our group chat. 
to end up our webinar series on LR development process, on behalf of the STO Shergao, headed by our school's division superintendent, Dr. Nelia S. Lomokso, assistant school's division superintendent, Dr. Haram L. Tarouk, the chief of the curriculum implementation division, Dr. Jemna G. Pobe, the division LR team, Dr. Evelyn C. Coro, the LRMS manager, Ms. Dina Luxel T. Solis, our division librarian, Mr. Donny Neer, our division illustrator, and Mr. Reggie Asopre, the division LRPDO. The team would like to say, Salamat karajaw sa iju makanunayon ng ngapagsuporta. Mabuhay ang LRMD Eshargao, and to God be the glory. SDO Shergao, kalidad na edukasyon sa tanan panahon.